you ended up with the uh, Albino PlayStation 5 controller, and uh, you've been having a great time with it. It's been working. I out. have used it. Yes. Hang on. Uh, Wait, uh, X input, everything works out of the box. Mm. <laughs> no. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Gentlemen, would you say it's a large show for the holiday season, especially? I'd it's say it's, it's the usual it's def- size. It's definitely a stuffed turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone had a fun turkey, turkey thing, skip. whatever, turkey with your stuff. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and all that yeah. fun stuff. <laughs> nah, whatever you do. Anyway, I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, as always, under Linux, joined every week. That is one Jordan Sfang in the not-yet-quite-frozen land of Toronto. That's it's a, trying. It's, it's trying. A, it's getting warmed up for the season, and the man on the island. One Pedro Mateus, staying up late past his bedtime, <sighs> along with you, uh, Shat Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form cocaine voltron but uh what have we been up to man i know i've been busy working on like earlier this week if you're in our discord i posted a video and it's like let me let let me see if i can play around with the built-in like audio filters in obs i'm like let's see if we can tune up you know just regular vocals like let's see if we can get gay play with just using the ones that show up with obs I'm not releasing that video because after much, much trying, I went back and listened to it. I'm like, that sounds like ass people. Pro tip from old man Vin. Don't use those filters. I'm working on a brand new video. Um, that will show you how to set up a digital baby. Basically like a baby version of what I have here that you can do at home with your existing hardware. And I'm going to, I'd like to introduce you to my two test subjects that will be, uh, Preview, Hello. right? <laughs> I built a kernel <laughs> for the That's... first time in like fucking five years, man. Like, oh man, it's it's gonna be a fun experience for everyone. But I will uh, put that out for patrons to help me test it, and so we can get some back and forwards to maybe refine it and update it before we release it to the masses. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, also, I've replaced uh, the bridge and saddle on one of my old Washburn guitars, and it didn't fold in half. Or the strings didn't, like, pop out and, like, kill me. I was very pleased with myself. I was like, look at me being all handy and shit. Yeah. That's it. That's all I've been doing, man. What about you, Jordan? I know you've been building kernels. I've been building... I've been dicking around. I've been trying to get, like, jack set up on my box. I need to listen... Or I need to watch Ben's video on that, apparently. I got... I got pretty far on my own. Apparently, there's some background noise shit I need to address, but, you know... I could have spent, like, 30 minutes just, like, drawing an aardvark in Gim. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's 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 just gonna be like and it's it's just a picture of a butt congratulations just, just stick with me stick with yep. me all right I'm, I'm i'm still i'm still doing the friday streams i built i made a map for my little world that i'm building next week i gotta build the dungeon that's the part i'm excited about mm. i like making dungeons i got tied up friday how's that going i didn't get a chance to uh uh daisy hung around and joined me uh he was a very good sounding board right. uh Daisy, Daisy from discord and twitch i guess um yeah um uh, and i i have i have my i have two sites of interest i got two towns and yeah gotta make a dungeon doing some like level design i like level design that's fun get to right. come up it, it's 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 one of those things where it's like oh and what's behind the door more orcs <laughs> <laughs> pedro you have an atrocious shiny brick that blinks it is very shiny. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> very, very shiny. Stop. My eyes! Uh, Fuck! <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, it's the uh, EVGA XR1. It's uh, USB uh, HDMI pass-through. Uh, it also has uh, two sound um, jacks. It's uh, It does, they claim, it does... Um, 4k 60 i haven't tried the 4k streaming yet but i did try uh, you can see the obs sticker there <laughs> uh it's uh i did try uh, streaming from a laptop to this box and just checking run uh, playing um uh need for speed world over so uh soapbox race world uh to 
check to see if the encoder was any good with like a fast moving game, a lot of motion, a lot of movement, a lot of particle effects. And yeah, 1080p 60, this thing kicks a lot of butt because there was no artifacting whatsoever. Hang on. <laughs> Jordan, we, we got to take a bet. Is that review going to show up before or after the Pine Book video? Uh, probably I after. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I was going to ask, like, is J.J. Abrams mad that you stole stuff off well, his Star Trek set? No, no. He, here, here's my concern. Do you think HDMI will still be used in computers by the time this happens? <laughs> yes. Something but tells as, me that yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be like, you know how, you know how like the USB 3 like compatible like has, has the USB and then it has the thing on top of it. It's going to yeah. be like a daisy changed HDMI thing where it's like four of them and you just plug it in. I just imagine it will be like having laser six connections in our hover of monitors and Pedro's like, I finally got it done. Here it is. Uh, well, I, I mean, there's going to be a big retro computing trend by then. People are going to be like, I want. Remember when you had actually had to actually touch your keyboard, yeah, right? Before and it, it was you, wireless. You, you, You're like, you didn't just think the stuff, and then it happened on the Dude, computer. That's so <laughs> going to be a thing. But we promise our horse will always remain backwards compatible. Our horse is backwards compatible because it's just a pile of goop. You can stick goop anywhere, even in you know what? Never mind. No. It's the steam. Linux update. Man, we got some we got some top releases. Steam's been doing this for a while. We're covering it every time it That's happens. That's kind of nice. I'm glad they do it. Yeah, it's got to signal boost some of the smaller developers that don't have like yeah. massive advertising budgets. Give people a look at their games. Uh, so uh, Valve puts these out every month. Um, we got one for October. And yeah, lots of lots of Windows games on here. Baldur's Gate 3, Torchlight 3, blah, blah, blah. If you're looking for Linux games, Jackbox 7 and Amnesia 3 before the first encounter are your Linux picks. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, so there, there's one on here that's kind of interesting that piqued my interest. Uh, it's called Solasta. And apparently it uses like the officially released 5e Dungeons and Dragons rules for like its in-game combat, which is very interesting to me. It's also a $40 early access game, so I'm not 100% <laughs> on pulling the trigger on it just yet. A bit. Well, yeah, I'll, 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 I thought also, you only wanted to pull trigger on like eighty dollar early access games. I can I can struggle to make many purchases. Then okay. there's a lot of money I don't have to spend. Um, yeah, I, what I want to, you know, I'm surprised because OG RuneScape worked in a browser. I'm surprised that's not cross platform. But Torchlight three on Linux. When? Come on, guys. Hey. One and two are there. Yeah, be grateful. Yeah, Runic doesn't ex doesn't exist anymore. It don't. <laughs> I didn't see anything. I like going through these simply because, because like, uh, let's face it, there's so many games that you, hey, look, Amnesia's in there. All right, right yeah. on. Yeah. BFE. Ah. And uh, Noida, uh, the, that, that's that pixel um, platformer with the wizard that you like cast spells and you can destroy everything around you. The environment is very much destructible. It's um, that, that one hit 1 1.0 and I didn't realize it. I guess I need to revisit it at some point mm. because that was fun. That was a fun roguelike. Right on, right on. Moving on into this though. Um, Yay. <laughs> Sale. <laughs> uh, Sale. Another one. Yeah, right. This used to be like such a massive event. Now it's like, oh, it's another one. Didn't we just have it? Don't worry, there'll be another one for Christmas. Uh, 2020 Steam Autumn Sale and Steam Awards uh, save thousands on great games. Plus, you get to nominate your favorites of the 2020s. All right. Fair enough. Um, saw a couple of things in here and uh, seems like I couldn't find anything. Oh, the points are a thing too, but I don't even know what to do with those. Uh, I, I bought an FTL background for my Steam page because I'm like, what can you... Literally today, I'm like, what the hell can you even do with these things? Oh, okay. Well, the first thing I saw was um, going through the sales. Like, for the past couple of sales, I, I keep seeing Metro Exodus. Like, <laughs> stupid price, too. It's like 15 bucks. I'm like, But I'm not going to buy it, you guys. Why? Because like seven or eight months ago in the forums... Um, one of the developers is like, stay tuned, we got a surprise for you. Apparently they're still working on it because uh, they dropped a thing on their blog, um, just an update what's going on with the 2A game. It's metro, that's 2A, isn't it? Or 4A? 4A. 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 But uh, close yeah. enough. I was giving you half credit. Um, you, you, get, you finish this. Two and, a, two and a half. Yeah, and I'll give you the other two points. But yeah they, they're like nope nope we're still working on the linux and mac versions of uh exodus to which i retort that's when i'll give you money 
So when, when what do you think, I already gave them money. <laughs> what do you think the over under is though? Because we we got the Steam Awards too. Linux games. How many do you think we're actually going to get on get like an actual Steam Award? Uh, depending on which ones they are, because like some more. Uh, who did we have? Like I know I nom I nominated some stuff, man. That. I, I don't not know. Terribly honestly. memorable. Yeah, apparently yeah, as like, I shut the hell up and I'm like, I don't remember which ones it well, was, but I did. Well, we, uh, again, 20, 2020 is a bit of a special case because, like, I'm pretty sure yesterday was January. I think. Right. Well, let's see. No, what do we have? It was March. Have? I remember. It was March. We have a uh, Game of the Year Award, VR Game of the Year Award. That's going to be half life. Alex Labor of Love Award, Better with Friends Award, Outstanding Visual Style, Most Innovative. It is. Um, Gameplay Award and Best Game You Suck at Award, uh, Best 80s. Soundtrack, 80s. Outstanding Story Rich Game Award, and 80s. Sit Back and Relax Reward. 80s. Yeah. <laughs> why, do, why do you think 80s? 80s is like an A-OK, like, people, it's a rogue people, light. People, yeah, yeah I, I know. People, people are losing their mind. They really like 80s. Uh, I've been on board with the roguelikes for a long, long time. I'm just, I don't want to give them the kind of money they're asking for it when it doesn't have a Linux version yet. But it will. It will. <laughs> Supergiant's been pretty good about that. And that game is written on FNA. So that's, that's yeah. Uh, they they have we'll no get excuse. around to it. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Even if they don't flip, it's going to kick in their door and be like, ah. Well, it was. It was. Look, uh, I already time- ported it for you. Just release it. You sh- it was. It was a timed <laughs> Epic exclusive for a while too, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. It's been in early access for so long. Like I've definitely watched everyone that I have ever followed on Twitch. They've been playing it at some point, man. So, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna say good to them. We have a new update, a new bit of, uh, well, a new tool, if you will, from SteamDB.info. Yes. Yeah, fine, and fine, I, folks. At CMDB decided, you know what? Let's actually start uh, tracking everything that we can that uh, Steam exposes as an API. And uh, their latest one seems to be the most followed upcoming Steam games. And yeah, you see like the amount of follows and the progression in the seven day trend, uh, the price that uh, the game has, if it has one, because most of the games that people follow are the ones that haven't been released yet. So they're still like TBD uh, on the release date. So, yeah, it is very much like that. But one of the things I realized was when I hovered over uh, New World, which is like the fifth down, it says like third party DRM, easy anti cheat. Ayo, uh, Steam DB, can we have something that uh, we can check for, like, get a list of all the games that use um, Easy Anti Cheat? I know that there's the official website uh, that Easy Anti Cheat themselves maintain that say, look, here's all the games that you can't play on Linux. But yeah, it, it, it would be nice if it was, like, also included in the Steam DB tools, but. That maybe that's just me. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> How about this, Valve? Let's get a checkbox for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one one thing I noticed here is it's it's based on follows. I don't really follow games on Steam. I I went and checked, and yep, there is a follow button on the client. That is because uh, we are old and set in our ways, Jordan. Indeed, and like predictably, people are waiting for games to show up. Um, t- Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is at the top of that list because <laughs> everyone's like, "When's it coming out, guys?" But yeah, well, I, I, I did I, see. <laughs> yeah. The, very predictable. Hollow Knight Silk Song. It's good to see that one being massively followed. And another game like it has getting like, genuinely no buzz. I just ran across it one time was Biomutant, mm. which mm-hmm. I've been following for well over a year. But they've kind of went radio silent. So okay. yeah, the one I like to see there was uh, Iter, which has been TBD since I don't know 2015, 2014, mm. something like that. It's uh, one of those isometric souls-like games it's very much trying to ape the uh, dark souls formula but it, it yeah i've had that game on my wish list since yeah 2014 2015 something like that <laughs> still not out <laughs> man they're, they're still charging 60 bucks for vampire the masquerade bloodlines to 70 bucks for the pre-order fuck yeah fuck. which means people are paying it yeah, yeah. <laughs> people people really like that first one when it came out 15 years ago. Dude, that is some people's mm-hmm. jams, but don't call this a comeback for some reason. Don't call it a comeback. Uh, this is from Mike Blumenkrantz's blog, Super Good Code. Uh, so 
apparently he's been doing a lot of work for like uh, the Linux graphics stack for a while and uh, Valve has decided to sponsor him. Uh, so now he is primarily working on uh, the Zinc project. And for those of you who don't remember what Zinc is, Zinc is OpenGL by way of Vulkan. And I can definitely see why Valve wants this shit done working with a quickness. Oh, yeah. Because because <laughs> by moving as by moving as much as the driver space to Vulkan as they can, Valve has the maximum amount of control of stuff they can actually fix. And there's a lot of long-standing OpenGL performance issues, especially for games under Linux, that like maybe if we just throw all CPUs and the entirety of the video card at, maybe mm -hmm. you can take advantage of the hardware and perform well. Uh, so it's good to see that Valve is uh, sponsoring this. This guy has been, his resume is pretty impressive in terms of the stuff he's been contributing uh, to over the years. And it's good to see him getting some support. And it's good to see Valve supporting open source. So here you go. Yeah, uh, he's working on Operation Oxidize, which uh, for some reason reminds me of Avengers. Uh, but yeah, he's working with Calabra, and of course Valve is just throwing money at Calabra to say, fix the shit, fix all of the shit. And uh, yeah, it would really be nice to have that Vulcan button for all those all of the games that use OpenGL uh, that are available on Steam, and you just hit the Vulcan button, and it goes, oh, this actually runs a little bit better now. Go figure. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm down with that. I'm, it's still exciting. Like I said that last week, man. I, I love it when you think things are reasonably baked and you're quite happy where the ecosystem is. And I was like, no, this is mm -hmm. we're, we're going to play some more. And I'm like, oh, nice. Yeah. I, I just like it's yay you guys want some Vulcan no well too fucking yeah. bad we're gonna <laughs> right <laughs> but DX12 <laughs> DX12 ultimate that's the new one. Oh right oh right no. oh, more of that at 11 um <laughs> yes you ended up with the uh albino playstation 5 controller and uh you've been having a great time with it it's been working i out. have used it yes Hang on. Uh, wait, 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 wait x input everything worked out of the box mm. <laughs> no oh, okay I'll, I'll also stolen from gj abrams star trek set possibly allegedly <laughs> yeah no Jordan, it, it, allegedly. it totally looks like one of uh new trek uh starship designs but yeah the the issue with the PS5 DualSense, contrary to that article in Boiling Steam, was that it was not using uh, X input, it still used D input, so much so that Valve just went, you know what, we're just going to make it work like the PS4 controller. And that's what they did. But now they've been slowly adding new stuff, and with the latest update, they fixed the LED color changes and uh, enhanced, um, enabled enhanced functionality did they zoom? for PS5 controllers on Linux. Uh, no, no, the, it definitely just the enhanced without the zoom. Uh, maybe some contrast adaptive sharpening. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, they added experimental support for more than uh, four Xbox controllers and improved support for games that use raw input for controllers. Now, um, they do say uh, in parentheses about the PS5, uh, which is may require a Steam Devices package update. So I had a look at uh, the last person who submitted a couple of patches to the Steam right, Devices I, package. I'm, I'm looking at your show notes and it looks like you've like went straight like dyslexic Krypton. Like, what's with all this kernel stuff, man? What's all that? Uh, those are UDEV rules, uh, and I'll get to that. <laughs> but yeah, I found that Wimpy was the one who pushed out the last couple of updates to, uh, for the Steam Devices package, and I figured out the UDEV rules. They'll, they'll be in the show notes of how to get this uh, to support all of the stuff that Steam just added um, to the client, uh, you can get all of that just by adding those. All I did was copy the PS4 ones. I basically did what Valve did. I copied the PS4 ones and I changed the device ID to match uh, the Dual Sense rather than use the uh, Dual Shocks. And it works, but there's both uh, Bluetooth and USB. So just go copy that, drop it into, you can either drop it into the same um, Steam input uh, UDEV rule or you can create a new one, up to you. And I offered, I went to Wimpy's uh, Discord, it's like, yo! Give me another 1080s? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I basically just went, Pages look, like I figured it out, if you wanna. It's like, you like go. what do you want? It's like, well, I gave him a 10. You gave him a 10. <laughs> I gave, you gave him a what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm still paying back, back, back that 1080. 1080. In my head, that's still me paying back the 1080. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> oh man! So so support for support for um, more than eight controllers. Um, that's that's interesting to me because we we're talking about the eight dragons update. That only has remote play. So if you want to play with eight other people, you're gonna need to use this eight controller support. And my brain just went, my God, that's gonna perform like complete shit. What hey, the fuck? Can't wait to stream it. <laughs> but I have noticed this is their support for like the multiple four and eight controllers shows up, goes away, shows up, goes mm-hmm. away, and mm-hmm. so maybe it'll stick maybe Maybe. they're they're, they're trying (laughs) so girlfriend we got a little bit of gossip some drama yeah Yeah. you know that uh it wouldn't be esports or uh, esports wouldn't be an actual thing if there wasn't drama all around it so a valve employee apologizes for manually suspending dota 2 players account yeah so uh one of the people that was absorbed into Valve from uh, Campo Santo was uh, playing a game of Dota with another person, and the other person said, it's like, yeah, just let the mid-tower die, and uh, we don't need it, or it's a tactical thing, and just let the mid-tower die, and the aforementioned developer didn't agree so uh he banned him and sent him to the uh you suck uh queue which is the queue that people go to after they're put in timeout because they've been naughty a lot and he just straight up noped him directly to that queue because he disagreed with it and yeah turns out um the people at valve the moment that the word got out that this had happened people at valve were like no, sorry, you don't get to do can, that anymore. Can, can you smell gross <laughs> abuse of power? Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't, don't abuse your moderation power skill. Can I see? Ah, oh. <laughs> uh, good times. Yeah, don't abuse your moderation powers, kids. Uh, if you were a mod somewhere, like maybe a Discord channel, don't be an asshole. Yeah. Use, yeah. Treat, it, treat it like you would a loaded gun, carefully. But yeah, like, put, putting... Putting using exercising his they're not it's not exactly a ban you just get put in like the the timeout pool where you would get only get mm-hmm. random heroes and so on you can still play the game but you don't get match make as fast as possible so it's a really shitty thing to do this guy shouldn't have been doing that um I'm curious what his actual reprimand is but uh, this is being disabled going forward now apparently they just gave every I guess I guess there's probably like a shared password to like the Dota admin thing. And they're just mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, just just go log in and like give yourself some items or something. Oh, and he's this guy's like, I'm gonna go in and ban some folks. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at this man, and I'm uh, just reading through this. So, however, I'm from the article, it looked like the guy genuinely walked in. And he pulled it like, do you know who I am? Do <laughs> all right, ban out. And again, it wasn't like a ban ban, but you know, it was definitely a timeout session. To which you know. I, to your point, Jordan, I'm going to go out on a limb and just say, like, maybe that shouldn't have been something that everyone had access to it of. Just throwing that out there. No, uh, no. But, but <laughs> after saying that, I'm going to imagine everyone at Valve through all this time. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it really sucks when somebody comes along and fucks up a good thing, doesn't it? Right. Like, yeah, pe- pe- people were doing it on the on the DL, like just banning people mm-hmm. in Counter Strike or DFT or something. Like I don't, I don't like. Or you, like but using like, the power responsibly, and the new guy sure. shows up, and you're like, great, yeah, you fucked it up. Yeah, because some for- sometimes the auto queue fucks up, and they had to go in and do something manually, and then some asshole that disagrees with a tactical decision that one of his teammates did decides to put him into naughty queue. Don't do that. <laughs> but, but so th- this 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 is the problem with like Dota like games is you get this sort of mentality in the player base when you talk about toxicity in the gaming community. There's a reason people are like League of Legends, Dota, Heroes of New Earth. Those yeah, are the those, those are the those are the cesspits. So we got some game updates and kind of a big one. Yeah, RetroArch. Uh, we've been following this for a little while. Uh, the RetroArch project has been in negotiations with Steam to like, how do we get emulators on Steam without making you guys a huge legal liability? And now um, it's available. You can re- you have to request access to it, but like I hit request access. Instantaneously, and like, right? Yeah, you've been, gra- you've been granted access. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know why they're making me go through this extra step, but just in case you're a little concerned, um, it runs. Installing cores is a little... Eh, it doesn't when you, when you go to install specific cores, it doesn't tell you when they are installed from like a steam perspective um it doesn't work with some of my old hacked roms but it does work with like vanilla roms for like game boy advance i played a little bit of pokemon 
Um, it has a wide variety of uh, emulators already present. You can try them out with your legally ripped ROMs of choice. Need to emphasize yes. this. <laughs> Legitimately dumped ROMs from physical now, copies that you own. But, but Jordan, I'm looking at system requirements and it doesn't say Linux. It doesn't say Linux, but it's fucking retro arch man <laughs> you could already get it on linux it's just also available on linux now as an app image uh through steam and yes. it did have some issues on my end which uh i fixed by basically going into where the folder where the app image is there's another folder there that has the dot config files so i just copied all of those files manually to the dot config retro arch folder and all of a sudden everything works properly like it should of from the start because it, someone done goofed now now no in their defense though i mean they, they've progressively gotten it's been hitting updates like every day so i mean it, it's getting up yeah. and to uh, strider's point he says the hell question mark cores or dlc you do that just in case the people get a little suey yes also, uh, i mean they also, had to do that because valve told them to do that <laughs> i mean it's, it's also not a bad idea right like if you would just want to control what's on your system if you're not using i mean to be fair these emulators are like a couple kilobytes in size but mm -hmm. people people are fussy about it i think it's actually a pretty graceful way of handling it because then mm -hmm. you can add more cores you can take away cores it's leveraging the tools that are already there to make people's lives easy and if you have to pay for a license for one of the emulators for some reason if you already have them as split dlc then you can just charge for that one bit of dlc instead yeah. of putting an actual price tag on the whole thing yeah, yeah it's it, 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 it's it's <laughs> definitely it's definitely a scope dodge but i think in terms of as far as scope dodges go this is a pretty well thought out one so yeah. what do you think about this man do, do you think um the console you know the, the ip owners will ever in our lifetime realize that the type of people who want to play on emulators the original games are not the same market of people who will buy a bre your brand new system in order <clears> to play one game that you've happened to put on it through them but I, I, I don't system. think so because you got to be you got to be grateful that we're offering you an emulator that you can purchase on our eShop mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. download the, like this this has been a big problem like uh smash bros the smash bros melee community got hit by this super hard because nintendo went after them for trying to keep a fucking like 20 year old game alive right that yeah. people are still playing <laughs> that there's no modern support for like this this is an easily solvable problem Nin people like nintendo people like sony have virtual consoles they have emulators that they have developed sometimes they just steal the open source ones wholesale and they're like gpl or yep. bsd license <laughs> so get get fucked original devs they can yeah this, this is an easily solvable problem that corporate that these corporate entities do not want to solve because there's it more just, money. Than I, I'm trying to look at it from a um, fiscal sense and uh, to my own point, man, I'm going to throw back like, <laughs> you know, what, what would be the price? Buck 99 for a NES game? I'd pay two bucks for a NES game if I wanted. Right. Like if I knew I could yeah. get like a legit copy that was always going to be available to me and I didn't have to keep it stored somewhere. Uh, or ho hooked into Cloud Sync so ex I could. Exactly. Mm hmm. There's there's a pretty big value add here that you could absolutely monetize, mm -hmm. but there, it's for whatever reason it's not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here's a little piece I wanted to throw out. Uh, Black Mesa, we talked about it, but it's out. The definitive edition, like for reals this time, X2 uh, Squiggly Mark. For Riggedy Real? The final major update for Black Mesa. They're happy to announce we're releasing our big update. And it's the definitive edition. Uh, since March, they've been working on it. They've been adding some extra polish to the game. Was the NVIDIA logo. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> it's currently fifty percent off, so you can get it nine nine nine. Even when it does handstands, um, there's so we're going to continue supporting the game, fix bugs, known issues. Uh, big highlight: um, a lot of the closed captioning translation files have been updated. Uh, there's some new lighting stuff, full workshop support. Um, there's still some issues because hey, this game. Um, I've, I ran into like one serious issue i streamed a bit of it last night if you're watching us on twitch with my um just impeccable next level skill uh playing with a trackball and mlg strats legitimately having somebody sh having somebody show up in chat jordan asking are you playing with a controller <laughs> <laughs> There has to be 
be some kind of trophy for that. Can but, we can 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 we make that? Can we can right. we put that? Does Amazon have like a trophy customization thing? Can we just like send you one? I was like, well done, old man, well done. And um <laughs> Wow. Here's the problem. Here's like the legitimate problem I had with it. Um You motherfuckers jacked up my save. I finally thought it was safe. I didn't start. Uh, I I've been doing a series for like taking a break from it, but well, I'll get back into it. Road to Zen, because I've never played the original Half-Life 1, and it went through the trouble. I do, it's available now, but I'd rather do it through this lens, you know, with updated stuff. So I'm genuinely experiencing this for the first time. There's no um, acting. And uh, I waited until 1.0, and I'm like, finally, 1.0 is up. Because if you're familiar with Black Mesa, through the past seven, nine years of development, Every time they changed a shader, they're like, ah, that's going to screw up all your saves. Deal with it. Uh, start back at the beginning of the chapter. Thought we were done. We're not done with that. No. <laughs> Go check your saves. Incompatible. Fuck you. That's why. Seriously. Uh, again, it's, it doesn't even mention that anywhere in the release notes. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it was I, I don't, th- 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 there's something to be said for like, I don't know. Having some level of save file compatibility, like, yeah, may- maybe it doesn't track your exact location, but it puts you in the right area, right? Uh, it sends like, you back to the last checkpoint. The, nope, like, the checkpoint, nope, honestly, uh, something. Start the entire <laughs> chapter over, and what set me off is I was on the last bit. Oh. <laughs> and if you've watched me play, like the person who was like, are you playing with a controller? It takes me time to get through this. <laughs> it's like watching a particular, like a learning disabled AI, a very poor AI trying to like just, just kill itself until it figures out the right route. That's I, pretty much me playing the game. I had some, I had some young blood flashbacks. Like, yeah, usually when that shit happens, like, well, that game was fun. <laughs> right. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> if, no, you, if you're not respecting my time, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. You can go play with it. Um, I'd like to say, hey, it's safe. Your saves are safe, but they might update a translation file and they'll probably wipe it. Uh, no through. safe so, game yeah. is safe. Black Mesa available on Steam. Coming up next, we got some NVIDIA news, but paradoxically, it's in the middle of the news segment. Paradoxically. The news this week don't, uh, sir, they don't feature. Uh, you uh, fucked uh, up. Uh, right? uh, I like that. I did. <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I have been drinking since like 8 p.m. today. So, yeah. Uh, the <laughs> You know what? It's been a bit of minute. It's a bit of a minute since uh, I, I miss. That's one thing I do miss about uh, being able to drink is like the straight up like, I don't even remember that. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, that, that that was one show that like the whole news and review segment just poofed out of my head. But uh, no, not there yet. Uh, so, and, yeah, so, no. <laughs> so if you want to pay Pedro's bar tab, you should maybe consider supporting the show. Head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Early Gamecast. Great. Early great. <laughs> Listen, the important thing is we're filming it and we're putting it up on Patreon so you get your money's worth. We, we, that's that, that's how you do. Listen, man, you, you, you can get on the show by assassination. Yeah, it's, we're, we're exactly like a Klingon ship. You just got to assassinate <laughs> the guy you above arrested. you. At no. which point? Eh. Well, well, actually, Jordan, that also works in the mirror universe in the Federation. It does. Yes. <laughs> but our, I mean, I guess I guess two out of three of us have beards, so there's a good chance we are in the mirror universe. I don't know. MirrorMirror.com slash Patreon slash Linux Gamecast. Um, becoming a Patreon gets you some neat shit. You can get access to our Discord channel. Uh, you can listen to the pre-pre-Super Shows, which is an extra hour content we do um, on Saturdays starting at 7.30. There's a special YouTube link. There's a special RSS feed. All sorts of special stuff. Pour you. Uh, pay a little bit more into the Patreon. You get access to the show notes. You can see the sausage as it's made, make comments, make show suggestions. Hell, if you want, you can even buy your way onto the damn show. We got a store store that linux gamecast.com it's got t-shirts it's yep. got stickers it's got coffee mugs it's got coffee stickers coffee hoodies what do you what would you do do they make, i'm sure they make coffee scented stickers that would that'd oh, be bro. that'd be fucked up and cruel though unless you had a, well, ready access to coffee <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm thinking of like a caffeine patch like a nicotine patch that you just like slap on yeah. and just caffeinate yourself <laughs> or you know we've all been there you directly at the back yourself, of your brain then, then you're coffee scented for the rest of the day you know? yeah <laughs> Oh, dude, I used to have to walk past a coffee roaster on the way to work. It was bad. Oh, oh, boy. Um, but yeah, uh, but, but, but if, if you go to your local coffee roaster while holding your nose, you can buy some coffee and fill it in an LGC mug. 
We got we got uh, wish zones. If you want to buy some stuff, you got you can... something this week. I did. That's right. I got a someone someone mentioned it last week, and I forget who. It didn't come with a note, but I got a creepy panda mask. Uh, <laughs> how does it fit? That was a uh, uh, Basil, wasn't it? I think I think it was Basil. I don't quite remember. So thank you to whoever sent it to me. I'll put this on. Why not? <laughs> it actually fits. I think it was Basil. Yes. <laughs> It's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that only muffles slightly. <laughs> only slightly muffled. Uh, yeah, but if you buy Ven stuff off his wish list, you get on the hard to read blinky wall behind him. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, you can also get some plugs off Patreon. Oh. I forgot about that. But, but uh, we, we got anything else? Else we got a plug? New uh, interfacing Linux stuff coming out? Uh, yeah, if you want to come hang out for that, uh, most importantly, you help support the show, and that's how we do what we do, man. That's how we pay the bills. But uh, yeah, it, you are going to get to beta test some stuff. I'm going to show you how to uh, set up our um, studio jack up setup. your life. Yeah, we're going to jack up. We're going to jack you up, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you some tools that you can get into trouble with. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, it does. But um, we're going to jump right into it with the humble big royalty free music bundle that's right it's not the little moderately kind of free sort of music bundle no you have 10 days 16 hours 16 minutes to get well just one buck gets you one two three four five five albums um 1782 which is if you're gonna spend 17 but for 1782 a- you get chuck kick ass that might be worth it <laughs> chuck tester <laughs> But for the full 25 white stinky caches, you get a bunch more. And um, the reason I'm throwing this in, you're like, Ven, what does this have to do with the gaming? This is all royalty free. So if you're doing streams, you just need some background noise. And maybe you're tired of listening to the same 63 <laughs> YouTube creative common things that I've thrown in. You want to get stuff like this and just have it there. And uh, it's a good thing. It's there. Uh, we would appreciate it if you shop. Uh, went to our show notes and like clicked or just went to the web zone and went to humble and picked it up. We get a little cut mm-hmm. of that more goes to charity than us, but Hey man, it's still nice. I had an issue. I, I legitimately, <laughs> if you follow me on social media with this, um, <laughs> first I went through the bullshit humble. You got to fix that baby. Um, because this is a lot of individual downloads and they're all, you know, two to a gig, 200 megs to a gig. It took forever to get it downloaded. I ended up just downloading the torrents, which still I had to go through individually. You know, it automated it with a bulk downloader, but you still have to sit there. Save, save, save. Click, 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 click. Yeah, click, yeah, yeah. You, you need to just have all that in like the one thing. But I get everything downloaded and I just have a directory full of zip files. I'm like, okay. I entered my little zip. Of course, I Googled it real quick and I was like, what's the right way to make sure this maintains? Because it's like some backwards ass, you know, asterisk dash bullshit to maintain like directory right. structure and everything. I wanted to make sure I was doing that right. It starts chewing through it. I'm like, all right, I need to go do some stuff around the house. Come back. And it, it, it fucked right off. And I'm like, nope, this is bad. I'm like, fine. Open up, you know, zip, FF, zip file. This thing's jacked up. Let me check another one somewhere. I think it was like a total of like seven that I found that just, we're not having it whatsoever. Even if I hold a support ticket, put it on humble and like, here you go. Here's the problem. Um, I'm not outraged, you know, it's 25 bucks, but I'd like, I'd like to get everything that I paid for because I paid for like the unlimited license. And, um, yeah, I put a little post on Twitter and like, Hey, here's a fair warning kids. I go through this and you know, this has been up. Mm, that was the issue and Pedro's like oh well there's there's a problem <laughs> yeah this is the Rawr. exact same problem that Mir was having last week with the other bundle um, because they just did a mass rename of all of the archives and some of them were RARs that have now been renamed as ZIPs so some you need to them. use UNRAR <laughs> so you get yeah, to some of them pack. not all <laughs> You gotta, yeah. gotta use the gotta use the file utility file start uh, whatever and figure out which ones are ours. Oh, it's the same bundle. Up. Okay, never mind. It's the this exact same bundle that Mir got that had the issue. So yeah, oh, the, they wow. just did a seven, mass seven zip. What, what, what are you on Windows? <laughs> no, 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 no. Seven. I, I had seven zip. This will defeat seven zip handily. Oh uh, yeah, no. A P seven zip rar apparently isn't good enough. You have to use mm-hmm. unrar. <laughs> you gotta throw the real rar on it, man. Uh, rar, yeah, that, rar, that genuinely, 
I didn't investigate it super hard. I didn't because I'm like, whatever, it'll get fixed eventually. Worst case scenario, somebody. But yeah, you file roller picked it right up for you though, right? And I was like, boom, just spit it out. No problem, Pedro. Did yeah, pretty earlier? much. Uh, I I just did the did the right click extract two, and then since it doesn't give uh, the thing because KDE, uh, I opened up the um, the task manager. And it's like okay, so oh, I see NRAR is running. I see they're doing the uh, zips as RARs. So yeah, you should, you should well, you should have been running WinRAR and Wine. That's how real people do. <laughs> <laughs> and not activate it ever? <laughs> no, you have to pay for the license, man. That's software piracy. I, I legitimately, that thought crossed my fucking mind, Jordan's fine. If I can still win, so probably. I mean, then I looked and I was like, no, no. just I eat. Then let's let's not a, go down this road. Well, the give a fuck a meter pegged. And I'm like, this, we'll get this sorted one way or the other eventually. But yeah, there is your pro tip, man. Uh, use on Roar for the ones that don't work. Which I look forward to uh, sussing that out later mm-hmm. to get all this stuff. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Humble, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, good news, everyone. Flash is still alive and kicking. Sort of. It's supposedly uh, going to die proper next year. It took you long enough. But hey, chances are you probably played a Flash game back in the day that you really enjoyed and you'd like, maybe you even got your hands on the SWF file and you'd like to keep playing it. Chances are if you use Linux now, you probably haven't been able to. But hey, Ruffle is here to try and sort it of that particular issue out. Uh, I did have um, a bit of a go at it because Daisy in uh, Discord was like, yo, this is a thing. I wonder if it works with the old um, binding of Isaac, like the original Flash one. So I went to Humble because the original bundle actually included the um, SWF file, downloaded it, three frames per second. (laughs) So... Yeah, no. <laughs> you know what? You know what, Pedro? You say bit. that. I'm still going to say it's pretty good for something that out of the box tells you it's a proof of concept at this stage. It is. Yeah, no, that is actually impressive. It renders everything, but yeah, no, the performance is still very much uh, not there. And if you do, uh, like me, run into a game that you really like that it doesn't run very well, go to their GitHub, uh, open up an issue. There's a bunch of people who already have uh, opened up a few issues and tell them it's like, yo, Really like this game. If you can provide the SWF, maybe link them to that so they can try it themselves. Uh, yeah, it's it's a good effort for the sake of preservation. It's very very nice. Oh, but, oh yeah, uh, most yeah. Uh, most of like the early internet good shit was done in Flash. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it, it's it's a diminished experience. Like you go and you watch like old Homestar Runner videos, and all the interactive stuff that was in there is not preserved on YouTube. So this is a good way to preserve this as well. Also, Rust is a very security oriented language, and ActionScript is not. So it would be nice to you know maybe make running Flash applications a little bit more safe on your machine. I, I gotta say, uh, ActionScript was introduced in Flash 4, and that's when I got out of active Flash development, so... Um, but it, it's good to <laughs> see the bullet. Yeah. Dude. Um, and of course, as you said, it's written in Rust, so hey, look, Cargo, I, I'm, I'm growing not... I'm not a Rust fan human yet, but it's growing on me. It's definitely growing on me a little bit. This is what uh, the Internet Archive is using to um, distribute their flash now. So I was like, mm-hmm. all right, right on. Right. So, I mean, it's it's got some, you know, people actually hammering on it and testing it, which is good. And I'm, I was just glad to see it because just from preservation. But I'll say what I said on Wednesday, man. Adobe, open source that shit. Like, <laughs> no. Got to pay a subscription yeah, service. at this point, you might have... <laughs> <laughs> That's what that's what's gonna happen, man. Dude. You want that flash content, yeah. you gotta pay us twenty nine ninety nine a month. But I thought you killed doesn't matter, give us money. Like, yeah. It doesn't it doesn't cost much to string up a skeleton like a marionette and make it dance. Now give us money. Oh man. Uh but yeah, to have all that old stuff, man, simply because like back in the day, like bandwidth restrictions and YouTube that didn't exist. There was no streaming video, and this was the closest thing we could get. And people did amazing things with it that should always be around to scar the youth of upcoming generations. <laughs> In, indeed. Mm-hmm. I- 
Boy, do you want to have a silence off? We can, we can get... <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> Dead air. No, I can just take off your uh, audio filter and you'll, you'll go. <laughs> that, that, that's. I mean, that's just the noise I make normally. It's just low grade. This is true. Yes, it's the vibrations. I'm, I'm secretly the Flash. I'm the fat. I'm the fat Flash. I'm the flat. Anyways, um, Vulcan ray tracing. It's a thing now. Uh, Kronos has uh, announced that they have a final ray tracing specification for Vulcan. And that's nice because there are a lot of uh, ray tracing capable GPUs that's on the market now. Game. It's quack. Uh, <laughs> no, it's. Uh, is, is that dude? No, that's uh, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Yeah. That that is my brain went like yeah, the <laughs> left turn. Uh, any, anyways, um, so uh, there's the ray tracing API now. Uh, Nvidia had one that was specific. As it was an extension specific to the Nvidia driver. This is the Chronos provided one, and it, it is in the Chronos namespace. Um, I put the links to the Nvidia drivers in the show notes. If you are on AMD or Intel via Mesa, this is still going to take a while though. Um, apparently though, Intel XC has the hardware support built in and the Intel XE driver stuff is being written with this in mind. Um, so there you go. Maybe get some ray tracing in your wine games. But I'm really ho- I'm really curious to see how uh, Josh and Co. can integrate this into like Dixfix or VKD3D. Now, uh, because now, because everything is being presented as a Radeon card to uh, for Dixfix, right? right? So having 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 that pathway, hey, we got ray tracing now, uh, will hopefully make stuff like Control, uh, which is meant to take advantage of a card that can do ray tracing or other games yes. like that. A little bit more gives it a little bit more horsepower, makes it look a little bit more pretty, and it's good to see there's an open standard and not some direct X bullshit. Yeah, especially um, not have something that works off of an open uh, standard like what Nvidia did for the Quake Two um, ray tracing re-release. Um, yeah, it would be nice to have something that is actually. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what the We're correct working? word here. Working, functional? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Functioning that would actually work with so, everything across the so, board, not just NVIDIA cards. Something that you can use, right? Yeah. Usable. Because, that, uh, you know, for all defaults of DirectX, and it has many, uh, it does present... you just see, like, present... a leather jacket slip over Pedro's head and... <laughs> And what, as- asphyxiate him? Yeah. Jen- Jen- Jensen just, like, comes out from the back and just like... Then, then there's just gonna be a corpse on the ground with a raging clue. Mm. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, no, for all the faults and, that uh, no, no. DirectX does actually have, <laughs> the, uh, the fact is that they had a unified ray tracing implementation. They, it's like, you want to do ray tracing in DirectX, you do it like this. And people did, and Vulcan had nothing, so NVIDIA basically had to make their own to get um, Quake 2 working. But NVIDIA well was did. the one that was really, really pushing that, though. They're all yeah. like, oh, tensor cores, <laughs> ray tracing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and everyone else was like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, you can look at it in a couple of ways. You can say the reason that uh, we're going to be seeing uh, real-time ray tracing on consumer-based hardware is because... Nvidia walked out and they're like, okay, we're going to put some delicate, dedicated silicon mm-hmm. on these cards, and mm-hmm. then this is going to be a thing because we need to sell motherfuckers new hardware and we, we need some shit, feature. We're out of stuff, man. So let's start doing yeah, ray tracing. And for the, well, the new well, radio, you, you, you want 12 gigs of VRAM? Fuck you. No, ray tracing. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Yeah, no, for the new Radeons, uh, the, the whole uh, ray tracing bit is software based, which is why it only supports DXR. And they were very clear about that when they made the announcements. It's like, yes, we only support DXR at this point moment because there is exactly one thing that uses Vulcan that um, uses ray tracing which is that Quake 2 um, and it's NVIDIA or, only right yeah yeah. <laughs> having this is going to be a good yeah. thing man and it's good just that we're going to be seeing some like there's option B now so you can get rid of like DX12 the only thing we can do like, no it's not no it's yeah. not it's the only thing we want to use <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that VS Code will code for us. Yes, I, I, I'm just envisioning like Vulcan blocks. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, it's like MIT Scratch, but with Vulcan. It's yeah. like a little kitty cat. It's like that Google. Web, and it's web based, of course. That's how it's. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm like legit excited for Web VK. If they can get that shit working, that'll be that'll be pretty choice. That speaking is. speaking of web technology, oh, Nvidia <laughs> news in the middle of the news segment. Yeah, uh, so GeForce Now is on iOS and Safari. What does this have to do with Linux? Mm-hmm. Well, 
turns out that the iOS Safari one is using the WebRTC <laughs> client for GeForce Now as opposed to their proprietary thing. So uh, they're rolling that out more. It's getting more and more development. They're saying, well, now that we have this working for Safari, Safari is Chrome-based. We can now start looking at supporting Linux Chrome, which I guess is good. I'm, I'm At least now we can start playing Forkknife. But like it, it vexes me, it really does. Cause th the point of browser-based technology is to take the underlying platform out of the equation. You're supposed to say- we have, we have Microsoft's we gonna come in there and kick you in the head. Yeah, I'm, bring, <laughs> bring it on Sriracha, I'll take your roundhouse kick. I'll Kung Fu fight you. No, but like the, the, the whole point of the web is to like provide a set of standards that things can build on top of that is independent from any other platform. And when you start tying, when you start arbitrary, arbitrarily tying web functionality to host OS functionality, that's a bad move. It, it defeats the purpose of the solution. So it's nice to see that NVIDIA is like say, is saying, well, you know, we're, we're actually gonna try and leverage this cross-platform technology to support all the platforms that are should theoretically be supported by this technology. I, I don't know. Play play more Fortnite. You can't play it on. <laughs> you can't play it on iPhone. Play it on Linux. DRM. Yeah, you oh. might. Uh, this actually, depending on how long it takes the Y developers uh, to figure out what they need to get. Um, easy anti-cheat and whatnot to work in wine. The this may very well become the only way that people on Linux will have to play uh, easy anti-cheat games. Mm. I'm, I'm, we'll I'm looking, to, at, uh, wait I'm looking at Destiny <laughs> too, because like I just saw a screenshot up shot. Apparently they put a sniper scope on a wizard staff and I want that. I want that you're, so bad. You're an absolute monster. I gotta say as usual, man. <laughs> Nvidia is playing the long game on this and they're doing it smart, man. They're rolling things out um, when they're ready. And it's just like, okay, we're, slow roll out. And um, Google, let's be honest. Google's probably going to nuke Stadia in 2021. You know, I don't think anyone I'm going to, I'm going to give it 2022. I think, I, I think they're going to, okay. Uh, I, I think it'll be EOL by then, but I, I think they're going to kill new subscriptions and let the, okay. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> Cause if you weren't paying attention, man. They, they gave everyone a heads up when they gave out like Stadia gaming kits for just getting a month of YouTube premium. I mean, <laughs> that should have been a clue if you didn't pick you're like wait so i could basically get like a roman controller for like 10 bucks like all right so yeah keep that in mind but hey i have you uh my five of you uh fucked around with g-force now i haven't had a chance not really no, no. Hmm. not okay. not really i much. tried I Zadia and it said oh yeah you don't have a pixel device fuck you we don't like you so <laughs> I gave up on that. I it, apparently I <laughs> tested Sadie in 2018. So ha, get off my lawn. Um, yeah, that's my experience with it. It worked. G GeForce Now didn't support Linux, so I couldn't no. do it. No, no, man. no I can't. No, man. <laughs> we get a couple of reimplementations this week. Some open source goodness. Speaking about content preservation, this is reimplementation of the game Private Eye, all the way back from 1996. Man, Whoa. jeez. Jeez, that's old. Um, I never played this game. Honestly, I never heard about it. But this aims to be a modern age re-implementation. So it's going to be using Python, Pygame, SDL2. It should run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And you need the original assets for it. Or there's actually a demo if you want to uh, go play with yeah. that. Because I was like, oh, and mount the CD. I'm like, yeah, LOL. Um, <laughs> Don't, don't you mean ISO 9669600? Right. That is why they say mount. <laughs> yeah, so uh, one, one of the interesting things about this re-implementation is apparently they've changed the cursor. And apparently that's a big deal. It makes the game harder when it's not using the original cursor. Mm. I, it's a it's a point and click, so like maybe maybe there's some specific behavior. Dude, I'm I'm not sure. I never played the original. And we need some RTX on. <laughs> that, I'm I'm getting some like dire straits. I want my MTV flashbacks. Yes, right? uh, early nineties CGI. Yes, <laughs> reboot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I just uh, throw it out there. I mean, like, hey, go, go check that out because somebody's probably got that kicking around. There's always that like random old game, like something I from that era. I wouldn't mind going back and play, but I shouldn't. Is the original Phantasmagoria because? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did 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 not age well. Did not age well. E even as a child, I knew that was some cringy ass acting. I don't think I could handle it at this point. Extra sauce. That's what I remember from the original pet Phantasmagoria when he's like, has the severed head. He's like, order the pizza, extra sauce. <laughs> did, did you, either of you um, ever play Night Trap? 
No. No. I remember reading a lot about it, but I never actually played it. it. Yeah, it was it was very controversial back <laughs> in the day. There was a big mm-hmm. scare because I got it. Um, <laughs> had it on Sega CD, and I remember my mom was like, let me play this and see what all this is. And she's like, really? The- <laughs> there was a shower scene. <laughs> yeah, there was, yeah, like, it was nicer than anything after the 10 p.m. cutoff, man. Um, there was nothing in that game comparatively you would look at and be like oh no people were getting murked i'm like yeah well, well, yeah pe- people were concerned about the pixely blood in mortal Kombat. it was a different time a b a c a b b genesis baby mm. yeah get off my lawn <laughs> All right, well, well, let's SDL. talk about sea dogs <laughs> yeah sea dogs well, is uh it's an sdl based re-implementation of the original sea dogs which was a uh sea dogs uh, fr- See dogs. See dong. See dog run. Run dong run. <laughs> How many more uh, version um, numberings before we get to uh, yo dogs, white dogs? I don't know. What, what, but uh, version, this version one, up dog. Uh, <laughs> this one is very much the uh, zero ten zero, and uh, yeah, they fixed uh, weapon pickups, and there was a. Uh, black screen uh if you went to the player menu and you selected a an item uh they also edit the uh the dog character i'm guessing that is the titular dog for sea dog and uh, yeah it's the sea frog it's a new <laughs> it's a, a, a new release and Kermit, uh, kermit's doesn't... done with your shit he's got grenades he, he, kermit, oh man the frogs put down the tea <laughs> I, d- I went through it and um, I didn't see like the need for the original stuff. I guess you can just download it from the Internet Archive. So there, oh, there's yeah. probably look, that. Look, look, look at this build list, man. O- <laughs> only like only Scoop and like OpenSue's Tumbleweed have up to date shit. But so I guess yep. that's that's the one thing you got going for you. Open yeah, but I mean, it, it ships on Fun2 1.4. Fun2. <laughs> I, I, I had a look at the uh, Ubuntu repos. It's like, it's not there at all. What did they do to piss Canonical off? There's a pretty recent version for Alt Syphilis or Sisyphus. Sisyphus. Yeah. I, I, I'm just really upset that the version in Fedora is like ancient. What the hell? Oh, no. Yeah. Not 7.3 for uh, 32 and 33. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that was the most impressive thing that we found out. Um, the general availability of this. Um, it's, 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 you know what? For in, in terms of like supported build systems, I wish more projects were like this as opposed to like, we got a dev file, go fuck yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> True words have never been spoken. All right. Well, coming up next, it's really just a matter of perspective, isn't it? When we no. throw chairs at super liminal. I see what you did. So The Simpsons has taught us that there are actually three methods of advertising. There's the liminal, which is basically your your commercials and whatnot. There's the subliminal, uh, like Ivan et Niage. Mm-hmm. You, gotta, you gotta slip it past your brain. And then there's the superliminal, like, hey, bro, join the Navy. Or, hey, bro, go watch the Linux skin cast. So here we are. We're at superliminal. We're throwing chairs at it. It's developed by Pillow Castle, done on the Unity engine. You could pick it up for about 20 bucks US. Uh, what is it? Perception is reality in this mind bending first person puzzler. You escape a surreal dream world through solving impossible puzzles using the ambiguity of depth and perspective. Uh, so the devs did send us some keys via Curator Connect. So we got to give them a thank big you. old thank you. Yeah, I, I remember this yes. one. Just like I'm gonna pick up this die. <laughs> nope, that's a that's a depth, that's a depth uh, elevator shaft. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is where we this chair acquisition where we throw chairs at games. We talk about how it works. Did we have fun? Blah blah. It's a game review section. Pedro gets to go first because he really likes this game. Tell him about it. Yeah, but not exactly for the reasons you may expect. Yeah, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, it launches. It holds 144 uh, at 2560 by 1440. If you're watching the video version, you can actually see that on the uh, the corner there. Uh, the Even when you have like a crap ton of physics objects on screen, it 
keeps holding the frame rate, which is impressive. There's the occasional light flicker when the perspective shifts the size of a given item, uh, and it did the Unity thing where the mouse was stupidly sensitive on my end, but bringing it down to 5 seemed to cool it. Uh, I didn't bother with the controller because, you know, first person. Uh, the, the music got a little bit repetitive, or maybe it's just me and all jazz sounds the same to me, and it's got a very smooth, jazzy type of a soundtrack going, so maybe that's just a me thing. But that's only one of the two things that I hate, genuinely do hate about this game. The other one being the price to length ratio, and I guess this is the point where we get into the fun. Um, I get that there's more to discover, like some cleverly hidden tidbits, but I finished the game and I honestly didn't, don't really feel terribly compelled to go back through it again to find said hidden tidbits. It's kind of like Portal and how you need to do some lateral thinking, uh, but here it's far more painfully obvious that this is a linear affair. There's the occasional side alley, let's call it that, uh, and yeah, no, the way forward is one way and one way only. <laughs> If you deviate too far from that way, you see barriers like a, a little uh, force field shows up in front of your eyes. Say, no, you can't do that. Uh, it reminds me uh, very much of how Portal did the... Um the puzzles, uh, but at the same time, Portal sort of disguised, quote unquote, on that uh, its uh, its linearity by having you inside the facility. You were inside uh, Aperture Science, so yeah, you you expect it to be sort of kind of linear because you're inside a building. You, those walls you're told that they're solid if you walk up against them, you stop. In Superliminal, uh, those walls, well, they're not always solid. They they're more often than not, especially as you get towards the end of the game, they uh, trick you to try and imply that what you think is solid might not be, and you might need to traverse what you think is solid. That's great, but limiting the your actual play area with those um, force fields, it 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 actually doesn't. Um, it, it doesn't help it, in in my opinion. And it's hard to justify paying uh, 15 pounds and 50p for three hours of being reminded that this is just a video game. However, you know, disappointed as I may have been towards the end, uh, narrative, narratively, um, this is a chair acquisition and um, around this here parts, technical achievements are just as important. And fuck me, does this game make some very creative use of the Unity engine. Uh, almost every puzzle, I was a little bit stumped when they introduced like a new mechanics, like, what the fuck do I do with this? Uh, but it, it, it doesn't get to quite uh, Baba Is You levels of uh, fuckery, but uh, it... At, uh, compared to Baba Is You, this one is very much grounded and uh, based on reality. Uh, but on more than one occasion, I was solving a puzzle and I saw like an entire chunk of wall or an entire chunk of map just move out of the way because I thought I was moving a teeny tiny little thing. It's like, you made the Unity engine do what exactly? And it's still holding 144 FPS? That, yeah, no, that, all of that combined together put a big fat smile on my face and that's more than most video games have done for me lately. So on the um, technical achievements alone, it gets what? four cheers for me. <laughs> it does, man. Um, I, I think I'll go next, Jordan. All right. I, I'm going to take this one. Uh, check this out. So over here on Debian 10, the base standard on the 1920X, uh, Threadripper, 32 gigs RAM, NVMe drives, a little 2060. You know, this bad boy, kind of caught me off guard man it's running vulcan right out of the box but you know it's got some issues man because the first thing i noticed was a damn near full second of delay in the menu cursor yeah so what you know digging around and flippity ibbity jibbity by bo suggest hey force open gl or try it see if that fixes anything also maybe try vsync i tried vsync it reduced it but it was still there and um 
Turns out um, the Force Open GL sorted it on my end. Doing this killed my beloved Mango HUD, so I had the sads, but you know what? I got over it because I steam overlay. You know, I want to see what the performance was on my end with a little 2060. It's going about uh, 170 to 200 at what I'm guessing was a UHD 2160p. I'll say guessing since the game lacks, you know, resolution options. But hey, it lacks a windowed mode as well, so don't don't expect any streaming of this game from us. Kind of need that. It does move. You know, when you move, you move. And uh, when it makes sounds, sounds come into the speaker. So how's that going forward? And out of the box, you know, from Flibit, you, you knew the uh, Xbox One, SX One X, whatever, the red one I have. It worked. No issues there. But remember the open jail hack? Yeah. All right. Well, it breaks the game. <laughs> Uh, right, right about her. So that, that, that's where your, your adventure comes to a screeching halt, man. Um, after 10 minutes of like, what the hell am I supposed to do in that particular puzzle? I looked up a walkthrough. Yeah, fuck that noise. This is broke at the render was. But, you know, like you might experience issues. Felt one. A bit later, you know, um, I cheesed my way through the opening menu with a mouse, which is like you move it and you wait and you see where you end up. It was a mini game all in itself, man. Uh, but once I get in the game proper, Vulcan worked as expected. Um, but at this point, you know, I had like 75 minutes in the game. 20 of them were troubleshooting. But we're here to talk about fun. So let's go ahead and do that. I, I, I just went and cooled off a bit, came back to the game after a few hours. Um, I was at the exit of the motel, which I'm guessing is like the first stage, right? It's your first little bit that you go through. Right there where this warped door was that I needed to get up to get a line to. This is where the game auto-saved when I came back. And one of my boxes uh, remained on the lower level, but the other one that I used to get up there was nowhere to be found. And the only way to get the other box was to go down, and then that box wasn't there, and I couldn't get back up. It didn't sound like a lot of fun because it was kind of broke. My my option was to restart at the beginning. Uh, that's kind of where I tapped out, man. Um, you know, the puzzles might get more challenging, and I'm looking at the video, and they kind of seem more of the same. But what I played right there at the beginning of it, you know, in the first hour, felt more like running about just completing tasks. I didn't see anything that was terribly challenging. Now, let's talk about the fun mechanic. That's the perspective mechanic in this. It's kind of hit or miss because I often felt myself relying on the tried, true, and tested mechanic of, all right, raise the thing above me and drop it on head to embiggen it, or just smash thing into wall to debiggen it. And um, I guess, what do I want to say? Let's wrap this up. At the end of the day, I mean, it's a serviceable little puzzle game, but that's about it, you know? We're towards the end of 2020, man, thankfully, but for like 20 bucks, I, I expect resolution options, windowed mode, and more importantly, things to just work out of the box. And, you know, again, I'm on Debian 10, I'm running the latest NVIDIA Bulkin, uh, Bulkin, yes, Bulkin B Bulkin. Bulkin. drivers. Bulkin. <laughs> yes, Bulkin up, baby, beefcake. <laughs> um, but alas, um, you know... Here's the thing. If, if the game was just amazeballs, mind-bending, next-level stuff, I could overlook all of that and be like, it's worth it. Just go through the experience. Just get to play it, man. And be a lot more generous. But this is a puzzle game. I mean, it's, it's serviceable. It's all right. But the best I can do, man, is I can give it a very, very reluctant. This is like... Maybe, oh, you're getting to because it can be forced into working and um yeah that's really all i can say about it man i, I wish i could say better about it but i can't oh man so I'm, I'm watching pedro struggle with this area it took me like two seconds i had more trouble with the jump because i couldn't fucking land the jump um <laughs> i was just looking for the hidden stuff I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but any, but anyways, um, yeah, out of uh, on NVIDIA and AMD, so I tested this on Fedora 33 with the i7 6700K and the RX 60 or 5700XT, uh, and on Fedora 32 64-bit with the Ryzen 9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. So, um, on AMD, or they both launch out of the box, um, they both hold 60 FPS at UHD. Uh, if you knock off VSync on AMD, you get some tearing. 
Um, if you keep VSync on on NVIDIA, you get the chuggies. So I'm going to say AMD wins the out of the box experience on this one. Also, Ven, there is a resolution option, but it's in the gameplay menu for whatever fucking reason. <laughs> what? Why? Yes. Yes. I was looking through the options. And I'm like, so, what kind so, of options so are there? It's not under options. No, it's not under graphics. It's oh. under gameplay. Okay. Which it, it's, it's a real <laughs> stupid place to put it. I, I agree with you, but this, it, it does exist. But you might, I, it might I as well be grudgingly hidden. retract that, but barely. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fucking. <laughs> that stupid. might as well not exist. Ex, ex, yeah, the the controls are pretty basic. Uh, it's was to move around, um, left click to pick up, right click to rotate. Uh, perspective changes the size of things. Blah blah blah. Um, yeah. Uh, the visual language here though is really trying to push Stanley Parable. But it's not not quite, and we'll we'll get to that in the fun segment, which is now. Um, so I actually really like surreal stuff like this. It can be real fun, especially when it really fucks with your head. And the game does have puzzles that can sometimes do that. A lot of the mechanisms are perspective based, and some are physics based. All of them will make you go, "Wait, what? Oh, huh." So, so we saw Pedro kind of experimenting with this in the in the recorded footage. If you're watching the video version, if you're listening to the audio version, just pretend someone is flailing around. Uh, in an Ikea box? That's about right. Um, <laughs> idea <but> box. <laughs> idea idea box. Um, but yeah, like... if it, Really, all this does is make the game feel like a super missed opportunity, because one thing I noticed is when I'm trying to look around for secrets, that's actually the way you're supposed to go, because there's the obvious... This game likes to pull, this is the obvious path that is the wrong path. Here is the other fucky path that you really need to go, but like, I go there, I'm like, I'm looking for secrets, not for the thing. And the li the linearity of this game is really the big problem here. Uh, it clashes super hard with the surreal gimmick, because what I want to do, enjoy avocados. I want to enjoy avocados. I want to spend... <laughs> I want to spend time like exploring and navigating but, through this surreal dream world. What isn't it? I mean, my my entire take from this is you're playing as a vampire. Maybe because you never have a reflection. That's true. Um, but you also yeah. do, but but you also don't have reflections in dreams. That's like a thing for lucid dreaming, apparently. Um, but yeah. Um, Really, the desire here is like once you start fucking around with the perspective mechanics and like the weird stuff, you want to explore, and the game doesn't really reward you for exploring. In fact, it actively discourages it by like just fucking with you. Um, and th I, th I think that's the the weakest part of this game is just the lack of openness, how closed it is. Uh, like peri periodically, you get your message from the nice Irish doctor, and I wish they were a bit more deranged. There's also like the Glados esque lady on the PA who's like, you can't follow instructions, you fucking idiot, and that's why you're gonna die in here. But, again, like, so this, this is part of what made the Stanley Parable feel really, really special, right? Like, there was exploration, there was experimentation, and it felt like you were actually fighting the game to accomplish something. Here, that's not really it. There's, like, the one answer, and that's it. Maybe there's, like, a couple other... Like, okay, so there, there's that area where you have to pluck the moon out of the sky, and you can get up on the roof, but there's fucking nothing mm -hmm. on the roof. I wasted so much time getting up there for flashing lights. And I'm like, is, is that it? I just go through the door now? It, it, it really feels like a missed opportunity. There are it bits and pieces. It kind of tells you that, like, right at the beginning, though. Like, when you first get out and you have, like, areas to explore to get up on top of the thing, you know, like, in the little yeah. test area, and you, I went around corners, and, like, there's fuck all there. Right, and they're like, oh, well, you need to stay on the path or else you're going to, like, go into this crazy dream sequence. But I'm already in the crazy dream sequence, right? I want to fuck around. And the game does not enable you to do this. Um, there are, it's, there are missing pieces. There's, like, some good core ideas up in here, but it's not complete. What I want to see from, like, Super Liminal 2 is, like, a Breath of the Wild-style dreamscape filled with these, like, surreal navigation puzzles. But it's, like, open world and physics-based, and you can experiment and you can explore, and there's, like, hidden stuff. Right now, it just seems so limited and claustrophobic, but not in like a fun, effective way. This is claustrophobic and like, man, there's really nothing I can do. This is an obstacle course. I just need to get from point A to point B, and that's it. There's no, there's no real sense of exploration or wonder beyond like, oh, that's neat. I gave up about near the apple puzzle where you have to like not have the fan blow it into the into the uh, into the pit. I'm like, OK, I get it. I just don't want to sit here and do this because the controls are kind of bad. I wish there was another way around this. And 
yeah that, that's really what this is like there's a lot there's lots of promise in this game but it's a lot of missed opportunity there's lots of things they could have done to make this a really special experience but instead it just kind of becomes like a run-of-the-mill puzzle game like ven is saying so i'm gonna give it two chairs f for effort uh we got any final thoughts uh i'm pretty sure this was this was like a one-person project right this seems like a. Uh, this seems like at one point it was a game jam game. Okay. Yeah. No. It, it's more than one person because I was watching the credits. That's how I saw the uh, flip it to Chibaibo, uh thing show up. Okay. Honestly, there's a, there's a bit of a dissonance between what the uh, narrative wise what the game is trying to tell you. It's like, oh, it's uh, it's time for fuckery, and then you actually play it, and everything is linear. So yeah. As a video game, it's not very good. As a technical uh, showcase for what the Unity engine can do if you actually spend a bit of time with it, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> and I will say as a technical showcase, it would be better if it worked slightly better out of the box. Yeah, it did for me. You, out of the box. Just, 144. Y'all y'all just need some AMD cards. That's what yeah, I'm that's hearing. That's pretty much it. Oh, well, you know, v baby. Um, it worked fine on my 1080. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I, I, think, I think that does it. Coming up next, we got some hate mail, and we're going to leave you to the rest of your Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whatever, whatever, Wednesday, whatever, whatever, yes. whatever day. <laughs> and welcome back to Linux Game. No, wait, no, it's the end of the show. What am I talking about? Uh, it's Weekly Daily <laughs> Wednesdays, tee <tee-hee. laughs> hee No, it's... It's the hate mail. Uh, chances are, at this point, if you've been watching the show long enough, you know exactly what's going on and, well, uh, what uh, you need to do to get in touch with us. But, just in case, for some reason, you actually close down the browser, um, like I just did, <laughs> the um, the way to get in touch with us, the best way to get in touch with us, is to go to linuxgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, and there will be a, a bit of a form that you need to fill out, I know, I know, and... LGC Weekly is usually the show that it defaults to, so just make sure you pick that if you'd like to send us some hate mail. Otherwise, we might take it as constructive feedback no. for that uh, Wednesday show w- w- we do. <laughs> Scatter shot a minute. I should throw some extra options in there. My favorite thing about hate mail is uh, if you guys ever log into admin, I don't know, it, it should pass the token, but do you see at the top of um, the CMS, it'll have like the green and red numbers? I'll look for it. I don't usually notice that kind of stuff because my, my workflow is pretty kind of <laughs> nailed in. It's our uh, spam system. Um, and it's something we're, we're approaching like 1,000 actual pieces of legitimate mail versus like 14,000. And <laughs> all the spam. <laughs> yeah. It's fun to go just read some of that, man, to see him trying. Like, you, mm, it's just good times. But this was an actual alleged carbon-based entity wrote in this week. Supposedly, uh, it's from Kylinix, and they say, I, Kylinix, claim rasterization for the island of Jamaica. Jordan is the official honorary Jamaican-Canadian diplomat for coining the turn. And then some emojis. <laughs> International affairs aside, I wanted to say big Uno star up and show some appreciation, as since I haven't in a while. Stay well, stay safe, and enjoy the holiday sales. Note, Uno is Jamaican patois for you all. But you probably figured that out by using context clues. I did not! Why? No, no, I did not, because the sentence goes, I just wanted to big Uno up. It's like, you all up? No, it's no, it's you all comma. Uh, <laughs> no, there's there's no comma. There's motherfucker, a star. read. Look, there, there's a comma right here. You quotation. You all comma. Oh, he did. Okay, yourself. all right, my bad. So, I, I, I just I just want to know though. Do I get diplomatic immunity? Can I start like committing crimes and Jamaica saying, will cover for me? With argue, there's no satisfaction in arguing with Pedro because he'll fight you tooth and nail. And you get to the end, you get in box. He's like, all right, whatever. Pedro, Pedro has <laughs> issues. Like, with, if I'm wrong, look, I, I, I'm wrong. Pe- I, I'll admit it. Pe- just, Pedro, I, and, <laughs> as Pedro's editor, he has issues with comma splice. It's okay. You're Sometimes. not Pedro's editor. You, 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 don't, you haven't had a stroke. <laughs> That's what you think. Stroke. I've just been drinking. <laughs> That's what you think. Oh, man. Uh, <sighs> hey, man. Thanks for writing in. Um, yeah. I, I'm trying to work in. A, I don't know what type of t-shirt I can make. 
for Jordan, but it'll be a special one. It should have nipples. It's going to have commas all over the fucking thing. Is it going to be the comma chameleon? This is going to be comma, <laughs> comma, Pedro wrong, comma, 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 Pedro wrong. <laughs> Stop splicing, God damn it. <laughs> Comma, quotation mark, comma, comma, I, I, semicolon, I, I, which I is thought, like the super listen, comma. Man, Pedro likes commas almost as much as me. Pause. And, um, <laughs> heavy <off>. pause. <laughs> pause. <laughs> Full hearted pause. Full stop, comma. <laughs> yes, I told you we were going to have a silence. And... <laughs> English teachers, go fuck yourself. That's right, man. Have them strokes, baby. Have them strokes. But you know what? We got to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thanks for writing in, man, guy. Um, we'll be back next week. But on that bombshell, isn't that right, Frank? Frank's got to get some new holiday decorations. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, you can always uh, find me on Twitter. That's where I'm most active since they killed our beloved Google+. Plus. We still remember you. At Vin Stone on Twitter or just at Vin because we have one of those um, federated time thingies over at mast.linuxgamecast.com. There we go. F- f- commas. Commas Dama. everywhere. Camille. I'm Jordan Spung. I'm not going to go uh, parading around town claiming the thing that Kai said I was because I'm going to get shot if I do that. You can shoot me <laughs> at the Burning Fool on Twitter. I also stream sometimes at twitch.tv slash burning pool. And I am the uh, veritable comma chameleon, because I think that's what Ven was trying to get at earlier. Uh, <laughs> if you'd like to uh, get in touch with us and tell me just how much I splice, please, uh, at unaccounted for, that's F-O-U-R, on Twitter. So, yeah, just let me know. It's cute when he's still fighting back, but his faculties are all fucked up. Um, <laughs> Le- Legend of Drunken Editor. <laughs> That's the show title. Legend. There we go. <laughs> Dino Fighter people. We'll get to roll Bye. some credits and thank you for this. Yeah. Yeah. Click. yeah. Bye. Tactical Abominations. Comma. Da, 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 da. Com- comma, comma, comma. <laughs> comma, comma, comma. We gotta thank all Jordan. of the lovely. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. All right. <laughs> we gotta thank the we gotta, bosses. We gotta thank our bosses, bosses, the advisors, Vigilant Viking, and our executive producers like Hoplo, Justin, Michael J, Angel M, Bob Ramp, Scott M, Fox Dog, Arthur, and Atomic Ass, Mike G, Dark Ving, and Empty for Chicago. For man. Chicago. <laughs> sea Monsters represent and Jack B, Truggy, Renault, Rider X Machina, and Kai Linux. Our Death Notes, Death. Lucid Links, Nova K, Basil B, Chad, P, Romeo V, Marson K, Martin Can W, System T, Craig H, Renee K, Leonardo C, Captain Zero, The Krasny, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Veritan, Oh, Nuda, I thought you were going to Death Notes. I was like, no way now, man. Um, <laughs> Dodgers, <laughs> And D, I eat a potato <laughs> chip. <laughs> potato <laughs> chips are best chips. <laughs> Shameless plugs for PowerShell on Linux. That's one thing you can do. And Nixon's Pyramid. Library.tv at Library.tv. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> bye bye. Um, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Basil. Five dudes. <laughs>